Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this Extra Maths, Grade 12 Extra Maths lesson. I'm assuming that if you're watching this today, that you are in either a Grade 11 preparing very diligently for your Grade 12 exams next year, or you are an IB student. Because as far as I know, the Grade 12s wrote their maths on Friday and Monday for the government. So that would have been on Friday and today. So I hope they did well. Um, yeah, so your papers are on the 2nd of November and on the 10th of November. No, and then on the 15th of November. So what I'm going to do is today, I'm going to, and tomorrow, I'm going to... No, today we're going to start by continuing to go through paper one. If there's time, I really wanted to finish going through the questions that we had started for paper two, but if not, then we will just continue revising paper one, paper, paper one until you guys write on the 2nd of November. Um, and then we will move on to chemistry, I mean paper two, till the 15th of November. Hey, okay, so let us do that. So let's start with a revision of this question. This question actually comes from a grade, um, from a very good school. It is a prelim paper for this year, and I will continue to go through prelim papers from this year until you guys have finished writing your exams. Okay, so it says, once you guys write your exams, shall I say, the diagram below, the diagram below shows the graphs of f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, which is the parabola, obviously, and g of x equals 2x minus 9, straight line, obviously. P is the turning point of the parabola. Both f of x and g of x pass through the point 0 minus 9, and g of x also passes through the point 4 comma 5 zero. So that's supposed to be 4 comma 5 zero over there. Who okay. Now it says write down the equation of the axis of symmetry of F. Okay, well they told us that this was the point the turning point. Okay, the turning point of the parabola. Therefore, this line here is the axis of symmetry, and that there is going to be X equals 4 because all the way along that line x is 4 and the y changes value so therefore we can say definitely 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 that that is x equals 4. Now it says write down the coordinates of the point which is a reflection of the point 0 minus 9 in the axis of symmetry of f. Okay, so reflections are no longer in the curriculum, but you know what, since it was from, I've just decided that since it was from a prelim paper from this year, we're still going to go through it. So what they are saying is they want us to write down the coordinates of the point, which is a reflection of the point, 0 minus 9, in the axis of symmetry. So in other words, I want to know what is this value here. Okay, that point there. So we know that the y value is going to be minus 9 because it's equidistant. So it has to be a point of reflection. Also, since it's equidistant from here to here is 0 to 4, so from there to there also has to be 4 units along. So therefore, it's 0 to 4 is plus 4. We had to add another 4, that's going to be 8 negative 9. So that's all that they're asking there. Okay, 8, negative 9. Now they ask us to determine the values of A, B, and C. Okay, of f of x. Well, it's quite easy that to see that we've already got the value of C. It is minus 9 because C is the y cut. So we already have that f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx minus 9. Okay, minus 9. Right, and then let's see what else we got. I'm sorry, I have to cough. Just hold on for half a second. I'm so sorry, but this cold is just dragging on. Okay, so now what else do we have? We have the turning point. We've got 4, 7 here, but we also have two points. We've got 8 minus 9. 
Um, so what we could do is we could say, okay, well, we know that this point is 4, 7. So we could substitute that in and get values for A and B. Similarly, we could use this point here to substitute in to get values for A and B, and we could simultaneously equate. So let's do that. <clears throat> so we've got Y is 7. So we've got 7 is equal to... Uh, 4 squared A plus 4B minus 9. So therefore 7 is equal to 16A plus 4B minus 9. So you take it across, 9 plus 7 is 16 is equal to 16a plus 4b. So I'm so dividing all of this by 4 to get rid of this. So you got b plus 4a is equal to 4. Therefore, we can say, do you agree? Well, actually, let's just leave that as equation 1 before we do anything else. Let's just leave that as equation 1. <clears throat> so that's equation 1. Now let's substitute in this point 8 minus 9. So we're going to say minus 9 is equal to <clears throat> Actually, we don't need to do that because do you agree that we know that this is the turning point? Okay, and the x value of the turning point is given by minus b over 2a is equal to the x value of the turning point, which is 4. Therefore, we can say that minus b is equal to 8a because we just take that across and you multiply it. Therefore, B is equal to minus 8a. So do you agree? I could take that and I could substitute into there. So I could go 4 <clears throat> is equal to 4 times, I'm so sorry, just a second. Okay, let's try again. 4 times by this value, 4 uh, 4a plus b is minus 8a. Okay, do you agree? So we can say 4 is equal to 4a minus 8a. So 4 is equal to, I'm going to get there, minus 4a. So a equals negative 1. Okay, so now we know that a equals negative 1. We can then substitute into this and we get b is equal to 8. So therefore, our formula is f of x is equal to negative x squared plus 8x minus 9. And that makes sense because it is a negative because it is a side parabola. Okay, so there we go. We've got the values of a, b, and c. Right, now I'm just going to erase all of this. And then it says, determine the length of dr, dr, in terms of x, if d is on f and r is on g, and dr is parallel with, to the line x equals zero. In other words, what they're saying is that we have some random point here, which is x1, y1, right? And we've got some point, random point here, x2, y2. And they want to know what is the length of that. But do you agree that y there is given by this formula? That y1 is given by that formula. And this y is given by that formula. So effectively what we're saying is y1 minus y2 is the length of dr, right? Because if this is parallel to this, then the only thing changing is the y values, right? The x values are the same. So therefore we could say, well, since that's the case, we can say y1 is the formula for this, which is minus x squared plus 8x minus 9 minus y2 is the formula for the straight line, which is 2x minus 9. And like I said, because x1 and x2 are the same values, we can basically just subtract them. We don't have to worry about x1 and x2. So it becomes minus x squared plus 8x 
minus 9 minus 2x minus the sum is minus is plus 9. And guys, please be careful. Remember to put your minus in in the brackets after the minus. Otherwise, you are definitely going to get it wrong and it's going to be very sad. Okay, so please be careful about that. So let's simplify this some more. We've got minus x squared plus 8x minus 2x is going to be 6x. And this nicely cancels. So they said determine the length of dr in terms of x. And there we've done it. dr is equal to negative x squared plus 6x. There you go. Finally, finally, they've said, <coughs> sorry, they've said, determine the value of x which dr is a maximum. Now I know we're doing graphs and I know that this doesn't look like a calculus question at all but as soon as you see max and min there is a very strong chance you're going to have to use the derivative and in this case we do. We want to find the values of x for which dr is a maximum but this is dr so we have to differentiate it. So we're going to say dr dashed of x is equal to minus 2x plus 6. And then what do we need to do? We need to let it equal 0 for maximum value, okay? So that is what we're going to do now. So therefore we're going to go minus 2x plus 6 equals 0. Therefore minus 2x is equal to negative 6. Therefore, x is equal to 3. And then you go back and check, and it says for which value values of x will dr be at maximum? They are not asking what the length of dr is. They're just asking for which values of x, and you write x equals 3. Ta da Done. Okay. Next question. Okay, so this is obviously an hyperbola. And they've given you the formula so far of g of x is minus 4x plus r. So obviously, it's been shifted and plus t, so it's been shifted up or down as well. So the cis asymptote of g cuts both the x and y axes at one. So here is one and here is one. So it's obviously it should be shifted one across. Okay, it's been shifted one across and it's been shifted one up. So it's write down the values of r and t. <clears throat> okay, well t is easy. t equals one because it's been shifted up one. And as soon as you shift anything up one, then you're just moving the whole graph up a positive one. So that's nice and easy. The next number is actually not as obvious because you need to think about it going in the opposite direction. So even though it's been shifted to the right because of the fact that we have to count for that, r equals minus 1. So r equals negative 1. Okay. Sorry, I just need to rewrite that. Negative 1. So therefore we know that g of x is equal to negative 4 x plus r. Sorry, let's try again. Um, let me just, I just like to rewrite it nicely so that we can see what we're looking at. So it's minus 1 plus 1. Now it says, write down the equation of the axis symmetry with a negative gradient. Okay, so the axis of symmetry is going to be going through that point. Okay, it has a gradient of minus 1 because that's the whole point about the axis of symmetry. So we get y is equal to negative x plus c. But do you see it's going through this value of 1, 1? So we can substitute into here, okay? So we've got the fact that it's going through point 1, 1. So we can substitute in to find out what the y cat is. So we're going to go 1 is equal to negative 1 plus c. So when we take that across, we get c is equal to 2. Therefore, the equation of the axis symmetry with a negative gradient is going to be y is equal to minus x plus 2. So this is going to be approximately 2. Finally, <clears throat> it says write down the equation of the vertical asymptote of g of x plus 4. Okay, so the best thing to do, I would say, is that we're going to actually have to work this one out. 
<clears throat> and by doing that, what we need to do is wherever we see an x, we're going to have to rearrange to form substitute an x plus 4. So let's do that. So it's going to be g of x plus 4 is going to be minus 4 x plus 4 minus 1 plus 1. Okay, so it really only affects the denominator here, but still let's write it out. becomes minus 4 x plus 3 plus 1. So do you agree this means that it's been moved <clears throat> to the right by 3? Okay, it's been moved to the left by 3, should I say? It's been moved to the left by 3. So therefore, it's original that's been moved to the left and says write down the equation so it's going to be x is equal to negative 3. Basically, what you're doing is saying when does this thing equal 0? And that equals 0 when x equals negative 3. So that is the vertical asymptote of g of x plus 4. Right, <clears throat> let's do another question. It says g of x is equal to a half to the power of x. This is obviously an exponential equation. Obviously an exponential equation. Right, so now the first thing that they want us to do is write down the equation of g of negative 1 of x, okay? So the nice thing about this is that the way to solve this is to use logs. So we've got y is equal to half to the power of x. Now remember how you do this to find the inverse, because that's what the inverse is. We swap x and y, we swap x and y, and then we solve for y. <clears throat> so that's what we're going to do. We're going to swap x and y, so we're going to go x is equal to a half to the power of y. And the best way to do this, the easiest way to do this, is to log both sides. Okay, so if we log both sides, we end up with, actually, no, there's an easier way to do it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to solve it so it becomes g of negative x is equal to the log of x to the base a half. All I've done is rearrange this. Let me show you. Maybe let me show you this. Okay, I don't know if this will help you, but it helps me remember how to do it. I always remember that 2 to the 3 equals 8, therefore log 8 base 2 equals 3. So it forms like a circle, 2, 8, 3, right? And then it's <clears throat> 2 to the 8, 3. Okay, do you see that? So therefore, this becomes log x that stays at the bottom, base a half, is equal to y. But this now is g, the negative 1 of x, because we were looking for the inverse of it. Okay, so therefore, the inverse of this is log x base a half. It says use the axes on the diagram sheet, show the, sketch the graph of g negative 1 of x. Okay, so first let me erase this. Okay, then <clears throat> we know that this is an exponential graph. Okay, so let's have a look at it, shall we? Um, okay, so first I need a pen. Okay, because it's an exponential, I mean, this is a log graph. Okay, wait, 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 let me check again. Using the axes in the diagram sheet, this is the axes. Sketch the graph of g negative 1 showing at least two points, which must include any intercepts of the axes. Any asymptotes must also be shown clearly. Okay, so the whole thing about this is that you should know that an exponential graph always goes through 1. Okay, up that way. And a log graph always goes through one this way. So if I let this be one, then what's going to happen is that it's definitely going to go through here. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> to make it easier for us, what we could do is go, okay, fine. Log, the equation is y is equal to log x base a half. Okay. So do you agree that log of a half base a half is equal to 1. So in other words, when x is a half, y is 1. So when x is a half, y is 
1 when x is log of let's put it, let's put it as log of 4 to the base a half what is happens then do you agree that that is actually a negative value okay how do you get that well the very easiest way to do it is to find your calculator just a second i just need to get my calculator out Yeah. There we go. The easiest way to work that out is to show you. <coughs> Sorry. We got log. This is 0 0.5. And that there is 4. 4 equals. That's negative 2. Okay. But let me show you how we got that. If you break that up into log 4 over log a half right which is one of the rules then do you agree this becomes log 4 over log 2 to the negative 1 the rule is the minus goes to the front so therefore this becomes log 2 squared because 4 is 2 squared over minus log 2 we take the 2 to the front so it becomes 2 log 2 over minus log 2 cancel cancel and that is just negative 2 Ta -da! okay not that you have to do that you can just use your calculator I'm just proving it to you mathematically so you can don't just have to believe me okay so therefore another point that we can say is when x is 4 2 wait wait 1 2 3 4 y is negative 2 1 to, so therefore our graph is gay to look like that and they wanted two points there's at least that one point there and this point here could be x is a half y is one okay any two points really okay so the mark allocation for this would be a point for the shape a point for at least the x-intercept and a point for a mark for that point or any other point on the graph okay now it says let's just erase this stuff now it says if point g4 a lies on this okay determine the value of a okay well that's fairly easy because what we're saying is that we've got the equation g negative 1 of x is equal to log x base a half right we also saying that yeah x equals 4 I've just proven it therefore a is equal to negative 2 I've just shown you how to do that okay so now we know that a equals negative 2 now it says for which values of this will g negative 1 be greater than 2 okay for which values of this will this be greater than 2 okay so if you think about it if a half gives you one what do you think and in fact we're kind of hinting at it with this point this point here is four negative two right they're saying for which values will g negative one of x be greater than two well we know it has to be somewhere like here okay so we know x has to be bigger than zero but we don't know what it has to be smaller than. We know it's smaller than a half because a half is one. So it has to be smaller than a half. So let's think about this. We want log, if we did log x base a half equals two, do you agree that if we can say a half squared is going to equal to x by rearranging it like we did originally? Therefore, we've got that x has equal to a quarter so it's going to be at least two at x is a quarter so therefore it's going to be greater than two when x is smaller than a quarter but bigger than zero smaller than a quarter but bigger than zero 
Right, so let me just write that down. X is going to be smaller than a quarter, but bigger than zero. Hmm, nice question. Right, now the next question says, given that H of X, given the, give the equation of H of X, the reflection of G of X in the line X equals zero. Okay, so what are they asking? They're actually asking you for the equation of the with the line x equals zero. So this is the line where x equals zero. Do you agree? Hang on. This is the line x equals zero. That's the line x equals zero, right? All the way along the x line. So actually they want the reflection of this. Okay, so what do we really do? We're letting x equal zero. I mean x be negative. Okay, so by doing that we are actually going to have the equation if your original, original is g of x equals a half to the x. So do you agree that would be the same as 2 to the negative x? Okay, that is the equation is that is 2 to the negative x. Now we're making x negative. So therefore h of x is going to be a half to the negative x which is 2 to the negative 1 multiplied by negative x, which is 2 to the x. So the correct answer, give the equation of h of x a reflection of gx in the line is h of x is 2 to the x. Okay. Right, now let's look at this next question. It says... The graph of f of x, which is a multiplied by b to the x plus q, is sketched below. Okay. Points k naught minus 2, okay, and r1 minus 4 are on the curve. Determine the values of a, b, and q. Okay, well, it's pretty obvious that q is in your new asymptote because this has just been shifted down. Okay, so q is going to be nine, minus 1. So q equals minus 1. Okay, so therefore we've got f of x is now a multiplied by b to the x minus 1. Which always makes me, the reason I write them out is because it kind of makes me feel like I'm getting there if I've actually got some numbers in it. Okay, now we've got two points. So do you agree that I can substitute one of these two points and I'm going to substitute the minus, naught minus 2. So if I do that, and there's a reason I choose that, because anything to naught is 1, right? So I can say, well, if that's the case, sorry, that's equals, the y value is minus 2 is equal to a times by b to the naught minus 1, right? So do you agree I can take that across and I get minus 1, because when I take that across Bingham's plus is equal to a times by one because anything to the naught is one. Therefore, a equals negative one. Woohoo! So now I've got y is equal to negative b to the x minus one, right? So now all I have to do is substitute in any other point, and I'm going to substitute in this point. So we've got y is minus four is equal to minus b to the 1 minus 4, minus 1, sorry, take the cross minus 3 is equal to negative b, so b is equal to 3. There we go, done. Nice question, hey, nice and not too bad. Right, now let's do this nice finance question. It says, determine the rate of interest per annum compounded quarterly for 240,000 rand to accrue to this huge number in over five years. Okay, so do you agree that obviously this is a compound interest question? So if it's a compound interest question, we need to use A is equal to P, one plus I all to the power of N. Okay, that is the compound interest formula. It is on your formula sheet, right? Now, we need A. A is the amount we get out in the end, which is this beautifully big number, 374,522,21. P is the principal. It's the amount of money you deposited into your investments. That's 240,123. I is the interest rate, which we're trying to find. 
but it's compounded quarterly. So therefore we're going to have to take I over four. Okay, I over four. And it's all to the power of N, which is the number of payments. So it's compounded quarterly for five years. So it's five times four, which equals 20. Okay, so let's work it out. So we've got 374,522.21 is equal to, whoopsie, no, wait, let me just fix that. The principal, which is 240,000, multiplied 1 plus i over 4, all to the power of 20. Okay, so all we have to do now is divide both sides by 240. Right, what happens is that cancels and we're left with this stuff on the right hand side, right? So in order to get rid of that, what do we need to do? We need to find the 20th root on both sides. So therefore we're going to find the 20th root on both sides. So then we're going to end up with 1 plus i over 4 is equal to this big number. Yes, so let's work out what that number is. So it's going to be on the 20th root. Let me just find it. Shift. The 20th root of, it's a fraction, 374, 522.21, all divided by 240. And then three more notes, two forty three more notes equals. Okay, it says one comma zero two two five. One comma zero two two five. So then to get this, we go I divided by four is going to be one minus that, which is going to be zero comma two two five. So we're going to multiply both these sides by four to get the final answer. So we're going to subtract 1 equals and multiply by 4 or equals and that's 9%. So it's 0, 0, 9 equals I, therefore I is 9%. Whoop, whoop. There you go. Not too difficult. Hey, that's quite a nice question that. So the mark allocation here was you got a mark for putting A and P in the correct values. You got a mark for choosing the correct um, formula. There was a mark for substituting incorrectly. And then finally, there was a mark for your final answer. So there's very viable mark options here. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. Okay, so this is a little bit more of a nitty gritty type of question when it comes to finance, okay? So it says that Nicholas is planning to buy a car advertised at 210,000 Rand. He is able to make a 10% deposit, okay, so it makes a 10% deposit, and then it takes a loan for the balance to be repaid over a period of six years in equal monthly installments at 16% per annum compounded monthly. He starts paying the loan one month after the granting of the loan and continues for the full six years. <gasps> sure. Okay, now it says determine the amount of the loan after the deposit has been paid. Okay. So that's pretty easy because he's making a 10% deposit. So it's just 10% of this. So it's going to be 210,000 minus 21,000, right? Do you agree? We're just subtracting a naught. So 21,000, which becomes to 189,000. Okay, so that's how much he needs to pay. The total, that is what he's going to be. Um, borrowing. Okay, now it says determine 
the his equal monthly payments. The first thing you need to do is work out whether you're using a present value or future value equation. Now, think about this. He's been given the loan. He's loaned the money already. Therefore, this is a present value formula because he already has the money in his grubby little paws, right? So therefore, the formula goes P equals X, one minus bracket, one plus I, Okay, let's make it just normal I. Hang on a minute, eraser. I to the power of negative N, close bracket all over I. So that formula is on the formula sheet, so there's no reason for you to get it wrong. Now, the principal is 189,000 Rand. Do we agree? That's the principal. Now we need to work out what I is. I is 16% per annum compounded monthly. So that's going to be 0,16 over 12 because it's compounded monthly. His payments, he pays for six years and at 12 months in each year. So therefore, N is going to be 6 times 12, which is 72. So all we have to do now is substitute into this beautiful equation and solve for X, the monthly payments, right? So we've got 189,000 is equal to X. 1 minus 1 plus 0, 0,16 over 12, all to the power of minus 72, okay? All over 0, 0,16 over 12, okay? So now all we have to do is to solve for this. So all we're going to do is we're dividing by 0 0.16 over 12 on this side. So we're going to multiply here. We're going to go 189,000 multiplied by 0 0.16 over 12 is equal to x. 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.16 over 12 all to the power of negative 72. Okay, and then we're going to divide both sides by this horrible thing. So, divide both sides by this horrible thing. So, we end up with 1 minus 1 plus, comma, 1, 6 over 12, all to the power of negative 72. Okay. And then that goes away. Right, so let's do that on our calculators. So we have clear. First, we need clear. We need a fraction. So we've got 189, 1, 2, 3, multiplied by a fraction, which is 0 0.16 over 12. No, that did not work. Delete, delete, over 12, all over, now this thing here, so we've got a big bracket, 1 minus bracket, 1 plus fraction, 0 0.16, that's not going to work, it's 1 6. One six. I don't know what's going on with this thing. All over twelve. Okay. Yep. Bracket to the power of negative seventy. Two equals. Oh, I knew it. Oh, I know why. Hang on. Let's go back. Um, go to. Yes, I know why. I forgot to put a second bracket in.
bracket equals there you go 4,099 rand and remember we always round it to two decimal places because this is rand and cents so it's 4,099 rand and 76 cents so it's 4,099 rand and 76 cents okay so that's his equal monthly payments and that's as far as we've got so we will start here on 6.2.3 um, tomorrow and great tools what we will do is we will just do paper one examples from now until you guys write your paper one on the 2nd of November which is in a couple of days time and then we will move on to doing paper we will carry on doing paper two after that right um, have a good evening cheers